Michael Anthony Salters described by law enforcement officials as a drug dealer and mediator among competing district drug organizations was shot and killed late Tuesday near First and Bryant Street Northwest. when an unidentified gunman opened fire on Salter's car. So I'm guessing somewhere within this region right here, it could have been back in that street right there or somewhere over there, but I think it's not too far from um, Washington Hospital Center. Let's walk across real quick. Uh -huh. So this would be the uh, the general region where he was at. One of the most devastating murders that took place in D.C. in the early 90s and had a lot of people scratching their heads was the Michael Frey murder. Frey being D.C. royalty on the street level was set up and gunned down, taken out by a guy who was a part of his own crew, Michael Jackson, ordered by Alpo. Scratch all that, this video ain't even about that. It's about the false information being spread by the FBI agent about Michael Frey and Wayne Perry. And just to add context, listen to this real quick. He operated because you said something about an extortionist with drug dealers. Could you give me some examples of that? Well, he uh, one, of, one of the guys that he killed later was a, uh, a really um, well-known drug dealer by the name of Michael Salters. And we had a, I had a confidential source who he had a close relationship with Salters and was present at, at some party at a concert. And Perry just walked up to him and, and started patting him on the pocket. You know, and this was a, this was an older man. He's like, you know, 50, in his 50s. And Perry's patting him on his pocket and, and saying, uh, what you got for me today? All right, so he said Michael Frey was in his 50s, which we know that wasn't right. He was in his 30s, actually late 30s. And then the pat in the pocket thing, I don't believe it. He said Wayne Perry walks up to Michael Frey and pat his pockets and say, what you got for me? Now I'm going to read something real quick. Rayful came to him to squash one of the most notorious beefs in the city, says a hustler familiar with the situation. Frey was like that. His respect level was high. Frey was a man who could get things done by any means necessary. He was a man's man, the type of dude that could lean on other men, that could lead other men, sorry. He was a man's man, the type that could lead other men, a man's man, a term heavily used by the Italian mafia back in the day to describe someone who everybody in the life recognizes as a great example of what it means to be thorough and honorable. So why would Dan, the retired agent, say that? Did he make a mistake about Frey? Or was his mind playing tricks on him? Coincidentally, that song, My Mind Playing Tricks On Me, was first released in July of 1991. Michael Frey was murdered in July of 1991. I mentioned the song as a point of reference to pinpoint where the six-year-old me was at that time in Lincoln Heights projects in Northeast without a clue as to what was taking place in my own city. Now Michael Frey, a man's man, was able to be a mediator between the crews, two crews that were at odds, the RE crew and some Trinidad guys. This man Frey was respected enough to get both sides to listen to his words. Even Wayne said, Frey was a good man. He never mentioned anything about him being the type to even allow any man to pat his pockets. In fact, everyone that know of Frey all spoke highly of him and said he was solid. He held his own in Lorton and he had killers around him that listened to him. Nothing about him says take advantage of me. I believe that even someone like Wayne Perry would not have disrespected Frey on that level. Hunt him down? Yeah, maybe. Put a hit out? Absolutely. But hands on him and walk away like it's nothing? <laughs> nah. 
Michael Frey's reputation preceded itself. I make big money. I drive big cars. Everybody know me. It's like I'm a movie star, but late at night, something ain't right. I feel I'm being tailed by the same sucker's headlights. Hmm. Willie D. It's safe to say Michael Frey never seen MJ coming. And for those who don't know, Michael Jackson was someone that was a part of Frey's clique. That type of betrayal is always messed up. It's crazy. When I think of Michael Frey, I think about the scene on Paid in Full where Mitch said, I love the game. I feel like one of those ball playing niggas. A nigga like me, man. I love the game. I love the hustle, man. I be feeling like one of them ball playing niggas, you know? Like Bird, or Magic, or something. Yeah, you know, a nigga got dough. A nigga could leave the league. But if I leave, the fans still gonna love me, man? Considering Frey's age, most guys of his status and age were either serving time, dead, or moved on. Not all, not all, but most, in the words of Jesse Lee Peterson. But I believe Frey loved the streets. He loved the hustle. He was making one more stab at it. However, he got cut down. In conclusion, I'm not sure what made the agent say what he said, but no one else have ever came forward and said Wayne pressed Frey out. Michael Frey rubbed elbows with the best of them and was respected by all of them. I sit alone in my four corner room staring at candles. <laughs> we out. I sit alone in my four corner room staring at candles. When that shit is on, <laughs> let me drop some shit like this here. At night I can't sleep, I toss and turn Candlesticks in the dark, visions of bodies being burned